Hello and welcome to the Edupedia world. In this tutorial, we are going to study about a very basic data structure and one of a very important data structure that is linked with. Let's begin. Where the agenda for this tutorial will include linked with terminology, creating linked with, simply linked with, doubly linked with, and some practical example of traversing, inserting, and deleting from the linked list. We try to cover most of them, but uh, let's see, like, um, we'll move forward with the linked list firstly. So, firstly, the linked list consists of a sequence of nodes. So you can see these are sequence of nodes. So, you can see there are two buckets. What are these two buckets for? Well, one is for the actual object that you want to show the actual value. And second is for storing a link to the next bucket. Okay. Each node contains a value. So these are the value A, B, C, D. And a link that is a pointer or a reference to some other node. So you can see these are the pointers to the other node. So this is how a link list is formed. The last node contains a null link. You can see this is having a null ring that means it is not pointing to anything. The list may or may not have the header. So you can have a header node or you might not have a header node. So over here we have shown a header node which is my list. Now let's study some of the terminology related to your list. Well, a node successor is the next node in a sequence. The last node has no successor. So, whatever your next node is, that will be the successor. Node predecessor is the previous node in the sequence. The first node has no predecessor because it is having no node before it. The list length is the number of elements in it. A list may be empty. That means it contains no elements. Now, let's see what is singly linked list. Okay. So here is our singly linked list. You see, in singly linked list, which is a simple linked list, which is having a value and a next node, which is pointing towards the next. Okay. So this is a singly linked list because it contains a linked list and a single link with each node that is pointing to the other node. So each node contains a value and a link to its successor. Therefore, it is known as singly linked list. Your last node is pointing to null. Alright. And the header points to the first node or contains the null link if the list is empty. Now, how to create a simple list? Let's say we have to create a simple list where we have to store 1, 2 and 3. Alright. So, well, this is not the, how we actually do in coding. But yes, for reference, it is something like that. You can see we have created a node numeral. So in ring list, we have to, you know, create a class known as node. So this is our self-defined class node. And name of a class is numeral. So we have like created this the object of the node class. And then we are doing numerals equals to new node. Okay. And in the new node, we are passing a value which is 1. Okay. And then again, second parameter that we are passing is again another node. So you see this node contains a constructor which is an empty constructor that's why we are able to initialize it like that and another constructor which takes a value okay and another node. So this is the value that we have passed and this is the another node. Now again this node again contains a value and another node. So in this way we have created a simple list like that and your last node which contains null as a second parameter because over here this does not contain another node. It is not having any reference because this is the last node in a single link list. So this is a simple list. So you see this is a diagrammatical representation. We have created 3 and then we have created 2 because this is like the initial one. The first one that will be created because this is the inner one. Then 2 and after that 1 is created. And finally the numeral is pointing to this node. So this is how we have created a simple list. Now how to traverse our singly link list? The following method traverse a list and print its element. Now I would like to tell you how does it work diagrammatically. Okay. So let me firstly show you the animation. 
so you see this is from the animation um like this is something currently we are here so this here is something pointing to us the, our initial node okay so your numeral is pointing to here so here you can take it as a pointer or a node that we will use to traverse our engineering so numerals is nothing just the head of your node so head is pointing to here and then here we have started traversing so here we we'll point it to something where the numeral was earlier pointing is actually currently pointing so here we'll be pointing to one okay then we'll do here next we we'll go to the next now here will become here is equal to here get next so whatever is the next element of here here will point to that so that means earlier here was over here right so this is uh, in simple words i would take it as a head so head was over here now your heads next head next is this right it is pointing to this node now your head will start pointing towards the head next that means your head will start pointing towards this node all right therefore our pointer is over here after that we again takes heads next now head next is this and this is pointing to this node the third node that is this one all right now again your head will start pointing to the head next which is this one now it has reached to the third node so this is how it traverses okay now your head node will become null and you know what will be there our break point at till what point we do the same operation till we get the heads next pointing towards a null in this case when it has reached 3 your heads next is actually pointing to null So therefore, it will stop the traversing. All right. Okay, guys. So this is my secondary ring list. You can see I'm having four elements, four nodes. One, two, three, four. All right. And this contains a value and next, which is pointing towards the next node. All right. So this is the head. This is something my head is pointing to. So in order to traverse, let me create another node, which I would say a stem. All right. So I have created a temp node. Temp is nothing. Temp is another node. All right. So when I say node, when I have to code it, I will you know write it somehow like this. You can see over here, a uh, node temp equals to new node. So this will initialize a new node temp. All right. Now I will point temp to head. So initially my node is an empty node. It's not pointing towards anything. Therefore I will do temp equals to head. so that it starts pointing to wherever head is pointing and head is pointing to the first node so temp will also point to the first node okay then you can see i have created a loop which says while temp's next is not equals to null till then do this what it has to do well it has to do temp equals to temp's next so that means while temp's next is not null now in this situation what is temp's next temp's next is this thing it is pointing to this so is it null no this is not null all right let me change the color yeah this is not null this is still having a value so therefore this condition has become true so therefore temp equals to temp's next will be executed so that means now temp will become temp's next So what is temp next? Temp next is this, right? Temp next is this. So your temp will become this. Now temp will start pointing towards this. Okay, and the current like the current node will be removed. All right. Now your temp has become over here. Again, it will check whether temp next. What is temp next? Temp next is now three. Is it null? No, it's not null. It is having a proper node with a proper value so therefore the statement temp equals to temp's next will be executed that means temp will become temp's next what is temp's next temp's next is this so now temp will become temp's next and the current linkage will be removed okay now temp has become this all right now again it will check for the while loop in which it is checking while temp next is not equals to null so now temp next is 4 now this is still not equals to null therefore temp will again becomes temp next so now temp will become temp next which is 4 
and the current linkage will be removed. I hope you are getting how I am doing, how I am removing the current linkage and how I am associating a new linkage. That's because of the statement temp equals to temp's next because temp is becoming temp's next and temp's next is this. Okay. So therefore it is pointing towards the temp's next. Now it will again check for the while loop in which it is checking while temp's next is not equals to null. Now what is temp's next? Temp's next now is null because its next is actually pointing to null. So over here our loop will break and it will come out of the loop and no more traversing will happen. If you want to print the links, then what you can do is you can simultaneously keep on doing a sys out over here. Like when it has actually reached the temp next, then you can actually print temp's value over here. For example, if I do it, so I write, all right, and then I write. So this is a pseudo code, okay? Because when we write it in Java, we have to create getters and setter, and we'll not use this notation. This is just a notation. To tell you that we are pointing to one next, we rather use temp dot get next and temp dot get value. Okay, temp dot set value. This is how we write our program. So we will also be writing a program of traversing maybe in the next video of our linkers. But as of now, it's very important to understand how it works. Okay, so simultaneously, whenever we are traversing, we are also printing the value of temp. All right. So this is about the traversing. Now let's go back to our slide where we will see how we do the insertion.